Hey everybody, Ted Forbes again. Welcome back. In this movie, I want to talk just a little bit about um, how this audio tag is indeed scriptable and how you can get a lot of control over this. And we haven't gotten into JavaScript yet or any of the CSS3, so um, I'm going to keep this on a pretty basic, quick, down and dirty level here. But more or less, um, let's go back to what our original example, and again, I'm going to be testing this in Firefox, excuse me, <laughs> in a WebKit browser. So either, my example will be in Safari, but you could also use uh, Google Chrome for this if you wanted. Uh, but what we're going to do is our original example, where we just have the audio tag, and our source is equal to, and here's our file that lives on the internet, and so this will indeed play. What I want to do is script some of my own controls. And so basically the reason I'm showing this is I want to give you a little bit of an intro into JavaScript and uh, talk about some things and show you how you can add some quick down and dirty interactivity to this. Okay, so notice that I've left the controls variable out of this. So right now if I, if I reload this page, you're not going to see anything. It's not set to play, it's not set to view. And so what we're going to do is do some controls to do this. So let's drop a line. And what I'm going to do is let's create a div, and let's uh, close that out. And inside that div, I'm going to make some buttons. So let's do a button tag, button, and this closes. And this is going to, let's do two of them. So let me copy this, and let's paste. And then the first one in between, this is going to be the play button, and this will be the stop button. Okay, this is very, very basic. Uh, there's a lot more you can do, but I just want to get your feet wet with a little bit of scripting. Okay, so what we're going to need in order to make this work, we have these two buttons and we need to hook them up and make them come to life. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is actually, I'm going to go back up to the audio tag and I'm going to give this an ID equals player. Okay, and I'll explain what this means in a second. We have a, we've given it a name more or less, and this ID is going to be player. So when I go back down here to button, we're going to give this an attribute to roll some JavaScript into this. And um, I'm going to write on click, okay, is going to be the event. And what's going to happen is some JavaScript that comes into quotes. And what am I, let me write this out and then I'll explain what it means. We're going to write document dot get element uh, by ID and then in parentheses and in quotes player, uh, another quote. And then I'm going to do dot play with parentheses and we're done. Okay, now what have I told this to do? Okay, basically on click says that when this button is clicked on, some JavaScript is going to be invoked here. And JavaScript, typically, we're going to get into this later, but I just want to get your feet wet here today, but it's what you call a dot syntax, okay? And so you could think of it this way, it's like drilling down into the core of something. So it starts with the document, which is our document here. And so on click, it's going to target this document and it's going to say, get an element by ID and it's going to be player. Well, which element in here has the ID of player? Well, the audio element does, okay? And what it's going to do is it's going to set this to play, and then you see an open and close parenthesis. This is a function. It's written into JavaScript. It's, it knows what to do. So all I have to do is write play and put two parentheses to know that it is, in fact, a function, and that's what will happen, okay? And we can also write one for stop. So I could say on click equals document dot get element by ID and we're going to say player once again. So I could have multiple players with different names, okay? And we're going to say dot uh, pause. Spell it right. And we're good to go. Now if I come back over here, let's refresh the page, you're going to see that I now have two buttons. Our player is hidden, but if I hit the play button, you're going to see that the audio file starts playing, which is what we want. That's cool. And uh, I could stop that. It actually stopped itself. Um, let's play it again. Now I could stop, okay? so. I know this isn't real fancy, but we have seen a way to quickly, uh, you can see how this tag is scriptable, okay? And that's because you have the option of displaying those controls or not. You have the option of auto-playing or not. Anyway, so you can write a bunch of interactivity in here to control it. So just to review, all we did is we gave our audio player an ID. And so the audio tag has an ID of player. This allows us to target it with the JavaScript. So what I'd went in here is I said in the button, this on click attribute, and I put the JavaScript in here. What it's going to do is it's going to go to the document under that. It's going to find the element by the ID, which was player, and then dot play. That's what you're going to do to it. And the other one was the same thing, but it was dot pause. And these are built-in functions, play and pause. Uh, JavaScript is very powerful. You can custom write your own functions to do different things. We could we could write some for the volume to go up and down. There's all kinds of different things. But I just want to give you a quick and dirty example of how you can start to script this player. So anyway, we're going to move on to the video tag in the next video, and I will see you guys there.